Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer bringing you some Domination on Dome. So uh, I like this class, it's a P90, It uh, I, I have run Specialist, so it doesn't whip out Monster Kitties, at least not in my hands, but uh, it's fun to play and I like getting my streaks. This commentary is not going to be all about the gameplay, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Uh, some people said that I don't play the objective, which I think is crazy, I don't know where that came from, I'm totally about the objective. I, I looked at my Domination stats and something like a third of my kills are defense. That should say it, right? It ties in with my whole style of playing Domination, which is holding two flags, winning the game, and doing your thing. Control two-thirds of the maps, and, and you get this game won. That's that's what I do. And then people say, well, what about your caps? I've got plenty of freaking caps. I looked at other people that are regarded as objective monsters like Onslaught, and I have about as many caps as he does. You know, we're roughly the same for the amount of gameplay that we game time that we have. So, uh, uh, leave me alone on this not objective stuff. It's just not true, and the stats back it up. But uh, whatever, you know, plenty of defense, plenty of caps doing my thing. Uh, Mike does get more kills, but whatever, he's a very good player. So, uh, uh, what are you going to do? That's that's domination, right? I'll sit here and hold two flags and, and do my best. One of, oh, one of the things before I get to the other topic is. Uh, um, one of the problems I have when I play Domination sometimes, not the games I upload, but usually the ones that I don't upload, the ones that aren't worthy, are uh, um, I try to do too much on my own. Like, if I hear that we're losing A and I, I sprint across the entire map trying to do it by myself, that can be a mistake. Sometimes it's a better idea to let someone who's already closer to the flag deal with it, or it's like me dying and giving advice. Um, sometimes it's, let, it's better to let someone who's closer to the flag deal with the problem, or, you know, let them have the flag and cap the, the other one, or perhaps, you know, get the flag back in a second when you can more carefully you know, do what you have to do. But it, it can be a bad move to, <laughs> to run across the entire map you know, in a sprint as if you know, you're know you going to do that unharmed and then save the flag. And, and sometimes that works out, but oftentimes it really doesn't. Uh, in, in game battles, it's maybe a smarter idea. But back on topic, I wanted to talk about the engagement encounter. So for those of you that have no idea, uh, in the U.S. anywhere, I don't know if it's every church, but in, where we wanted to, we wanted to get married in a church. And um, if you want to get married in the church where we were going, you had to go to the engagement encounter. So on the church a little bit, sometimes people assume that I'm like a really religious guy because I sometimes substitute curse words with like 1950 slang. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm not a, a particularly religious guy. Like I try to be a good guy. I try to be a moral guy. Um, that, that I feel like I, I do pretty well on. But you don't have to be religious or, or spiritual to be good. Um, it doesn't mean that you know, if you're spiritual, you're not good. I'm just saying that you can be good without being spiritual, in my opinion. So uh, I throw that out there. So I get asked that a lot. So, uh, so yeah, to me, like morality and religion are, are not necessarily tightly coupled, although oftentimes religious people are moral. So back on topic, I want to talk about the engagement encounter. We wanted to get married in church, so we had to do this. And I went into it with kind of a crabby attitude. I went into it um, thinking, oh, self-stun, that... Uh, you know, like, oh, this is something that they're forcing me to do. Do I really have to do this? I don't want somebody grading me on whether or not I'm ready for marriage. Like, you know, who the heck are you to tell me whether or not, you know, this is a good idea for me. I know me. I know her. You know, who are you? But um, what they did is is they forced a lot of conversations. Now, in my case, a lot of these conversations weren't completely necessary, right? We had already talked about what we wanted for kids. We had agreed that, you know, sort of the picket fence, the homeowner, the the children, that that was all something that we had as a common vision, my, my fiance, now wife, and I. So the, 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 some of the conversations that they facilitated were for people who, like, I think shockingly didn't talk about enough, right? If, if you're getting married and you've not decided whether or not you want kids like what are you doing like how can you not have had these discussions in the past but um some of the other people that were there hadn't had these discussions and were rushing into marriage for reasons that i couldn't understand because to me it's about building the rest of your life out together and, and you know how if how can you do that if you're not talking about what you want out of the rest of your life but there were other parts of engagement encounter that were really cool. Like one of them was this concept of sex, right? So um, the the me of say 22 years old didn't really think of sex as the cornerstone of intimacy. Didn't really think of it as like you know the thing that helps keep this bond between two people, this this couple uh, united and and on the same page. And and you know it, it's you know, the the physical aspect of being a team. Uh, instead, I just thought it was a really freaking awesome way to you know end your day or spend your afternoon or, or whatever. And uh, uh, so, you know, but spending some time in engagement encounter and they had some older couples that came in and, and talked about, uh, 
you know, what, what sex meant to them. And uh, by older couples, they were like, you know, 42 or something like that. They weren't like 70. But, uh, you know, still young enough to relate, but uh, old enough to, to know a thing or two. And that, to me, was like this really cool thing that I got from the, from the engagement encounter. Uh, another thing that I, that I got from it, was just to sort of see those guys as a role model. Another thing I had from like you got to see some successful couples and and how they worked and dealt with each other, how they dealt dealt with arguments, right? That's a big deal, right? Even probably in like teenage relationships, you have arguments and you wonder like what's the best way to do this. You know, the, it, the kids sometimes worry about this concept of being whipped. Like I don't give a crap if somebody thinks I'm whipped or not. Like you know, my relationship with my wife is is ours and. Uh, and you know the, the rest of it is is all fine. So, uh, what other people think of whatever the fact that I don't go to a strip club is is inconsequential to me, right? You know, like look, we've decided that's not a fit for for the way that we work together. Uh, mostly because I wouldn't like it if she goes. I, I would have been. I'd get really jealous if she had like you know lustful thoughts towards guys and banana hammocks. So uh, you know, I like I can sort of understand why she wouldn't want me to do that to girls who were topless or whatever. So yeah, it's not for us, right? If it's for you, then that's fine. I don't care. Um, but there were some negative sides that came out of the engagement encounter too. Uh, some of them I found completely silly, like this idea of birth control. Goodness gracious, really? So uh, if you don't know, the Catholic Church doesn't like condoms. They don't like any kind of birth prevention. Uh, instead, what they do allow you to do is the rhythm method. And the rhythm method, if you have no idea, is sort of timing your romance to coincide with the times when you're when the woman is the least fertile. And in high school, they were like, you know what you call people who use the rhythm method? parents and it was like yeah 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 and and the fact that i had gone from like this scientific backing to to how this can be unreliable to how cycles are not always you know calendar worthy and uh and crazy things happen, and, and you know, it's it's not good. And to these people who were not science-based, but more spiritu uh, spiritually based in their birth control, it was like, whoa, 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 you know, this is a medical problem. This is a science problem that, that's not meant to be solved with, uh, you know, with, like, spiritual advice. Another thing they talked about were finances that I couldn't quite agree with. Um, they had this idea that, uh, you know, your top priority should be donating to the church, and that your personal finances will just handle themselves. And they gave this example of a couple there had recently broken a window and they, they, they were so strapped that they couldn't uh, even afford like the repairs on this window. Claymores. So, um, um, but then at the last second, they had some sort of small windfall. They found money or, or who knows what somebody gave them money. A birthday present came in. I'm not sure. And uh, um, they were able to pay for this broken window. So in their mind, God had provided for them financially, right? God had just, you know, dumped the couple hundred dollars on them that would have made all the difference. And uh, and that was their model for handling finances. Nice nade, Woody, save the flag. And uh, for me, this is just crazy talk. Like, you know, really? <laughs> you know, you want to just sort of not count the money and, and, and hope that it flows in when in the appropriate time rolls along? Like, that's... That was insane to me, but to them, and it seemed like everyone else in the room, it was just a darn good idea on, on how to handle finances. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I solve math problems with math and, and not, you know, spiritual guidance, but uh, that's just me, perhaps. But all in all, you know, it, it, if you're, say, you know, I'll say a regular guy as opposed to a spiritual guy, that makes spiritual people seem irregular. That wasn't my intent. But, you know, if you're not a spiritual guy, this thing is still still for you. I, I, if someone suggests you go to an engagement encounter, I think you should go into it thinking, yeah, this is a pretty darn good idea that you're going to get something out of it. Uh, I know that I did. <laughs> I just think I stunned an explosive barrel. Um, I know that I got a lot out of it and, and the conversations with my wife were, or fiance at the time, were, were really kind of fulfilling. It opened up my mind to, th to think about some stuff in a new way. And, uh, and I got a lot out of it by some real talk from some older people who had figured out how to do marriage right, you know, who, who were there for, uh, you know, who, uh, 20 years of marriage and knew how to deal with arguments and how to deal with, you know, relationships. And, and uh, it was just a really good time for me. So uh, yeah, if your church forces you to go to an engagement encounter to get married inside their building, uh, don't drag your feet. Go ahead and say, yeah, this is going to be awesome and, uh, and try to get the most out of it. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. Some had asked for a commentary that was, you know, longer and not just about the game. Here you go. You've been heard. Uh, more tips and tricks coming your way on Modern Warfare 3. So have a good day.
All right, two pretty good videos you may have missed. The top one is about the Modern Warfare 3 patch. I put this out last night. I was pretty excited about it. They uh, they kind of trolled the trolls, and I think they're awesome for doing that. Uh, it's a short video, but it's good. Uh, check it out. The bottom one is a, a longer full-length commentary. You guys have asked for more of those. And uh, it's a free-for-all game where I talk about my free-for-all strategies, how to do well in that. And uh, I actually win uh, more than my share of free-for-all games. So, uh, yeah, you know. It's a good video. <laughs> Check them out. Surprise on the right. Subscribe on the top. T-shirts, Facebook, Twitter links in the description. Have a nice day.